गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अशोका ऑनलाइन एकेडमी सो एज पार्ट ऑफ द डेली करंट अफेयर्स प्रोग्राम टुडे वी विल डिस्कस द करंट अफेयर्स ओके फ्रॉम द हिंदू एंड द पी ए बी द प्रेस इंफॉर्मेशन ब्यूरो द अफिशियल वेबसाइट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया सो जस्ट लिजन टू दिस पर्टिकुलर करंट अफेयर्स फ्रेंड्स एंड यू विल बी बेनिफिटेड मच from this class see here today's table of contents today's table of contents i want to discuss about these topics so they are okay i have i am just giving here women equality day 26th august is celebrated as women equality day okay so what is this women equality day and why it is celebrated on 26th august what is its background you will come to know okay if you watch this particular uh, video then we discuss about arctic region and arctic council it is in news why because china it is claiming more and more stakes in the arctic region and russia has also okay showing keen interest in the arctic region and its resources but arctic region arctic region is a very sensitive place on the planet earth something happening to arctic region will have negative impacts on the ocean ecosystems and also will have negative impact on the indian monsoons threatening our indian agriculture and food security so such an important region arctic region what is happening in arctic region and what is arctic council okay when it is formed what are the working groups in the arctic council okay six working groups what they will do so all these things we will discuss along with the previous questions from this arctic region okay so always okay just focus on the lecture and listen to this content you will definitely benefit at least out of these seven points you will benefit at least two to three points for your examination whether it is upsc or state level psc examinations then third i want to discuss about these two are prelims topics e shram portal launched by government of india ministry of labor what is this portal what is the aim of this portal then pragati platform so what is this pragati platform okay why it is important to india how it is a good governance initiative and how it will work we will discuss from prelims point of view then ntca national tiger conservation authority what is ntca okay from prelims point of view we'll try to discuss jim corbett tiger reserve where it is located okay okay the high the highest density of tiger population in india are found in jim corbett national park so 442 tigers are present in this particular jim corbett national park where it is located what are the rivers flowing through it we will discuss then fair and remunerative price for sugar cane what is this so recently government uh, of india the cabinet committee on economic affairs headed by prime minister uh, have increased the this sugarcane prices in india so what is this uh, sugarcane prices okay fair and remunerative prices like for agriculture prices we have the agriculture crops we have msp minimum support price for sugarcane it is fair and remunerative prices what is this why it is in news we'll try to understand so these are the today's current affairs topics we'll try to just okay focus on this particular current affairs topics for the day first i want to discuss about women's equality day it is a easy topic for prelims this is for prelims so prelims of upsc and also the state psc so see here what is this women's equality day very simple women's equality day is celebrated in the united states not in india in united states on august 26 why to commemorate the or to just remember the 19th constitutional amendment 19th constitutional amendment to united states of america constitution so what is this 19th constitutional amendment very simple okay this constitutional amendment of made to the united nation united states of america constitution says that every state in the united states of america will not have the right to deny the voting rights to the women in the united states of america that means no state in the united states of america will do not have any right or 
any power to declare that women do not have the voting rights that means this particular uh, uh, amendment 19th constitutional amendment indirectly it will give the voting rights uh, or it will facilitate the way okay so that women in united states of america in all the states get the voting rights okay so understand this very clearly so this is uh, the 19th constitutional amendment was done in uh, to the united states of america done in 1920 so what is this remembering this particular on august 26 so remembering that particular important constitutional amendment made to the us constitution first time women equality day is celebrated in 1971 okay and understand that each year it is celebrated okay in united states of america you may think that this is not our news but this is very very important why because you can expect a question women equality day understand that very clearly women in the world they face a lot of discrimination if you take women in india they face a lot of discrimination okay we do not allow the women to pursue the higher education goals in india we do not allow the women to actively participate in the elections political system we do not allow the women to actively participate in the administration women entrepreneurs in india are very less and the startups that are started by women in india are also very less the formal loans that women get in india from the banks formal channels it is also very less and women faces different types of uh, social issues and threats they have issue related to domestic violence they have they have issue related to okay the what you call the domestic violence okay and other related issues are there for women in india so all these are there okay we need to do something to increase the equality okay on par with the men to the women in india understand that very clearly according to the world economic forum gender gap index gender gap index okay the india rank is falling down every year why because women okay were not engaged actively in the economic activities throughout the nation so because of that our rank in the global gender index is falling down so it is the time to ensure that equality is given to the women in to india in all the fields political field economic field administrative field and other business related field and see that they have all the safety related aspects in the society so that they progress to their maximum potential so remember you link this topic to the indian context okay then it will be making some sense but remember world e e women's equality day celebrated in uh, united states of america since 1991 august 1971 august 26 why because uh, august 26 1920 19th constitutional amendment to usa constitution was done okay according to this constitution no state in usa has the power to what you call has the power to deny the vote to the women voting rights to women in india also remember after independence right from the passage of the indian constitution from the first day itself we have given the voting rights to women in india okay so understand this and link that particular topic so that you will get some interest now let us understand this arctic region mains topic arctic region mains topic so see here what is this arctic region so see here arctic region it is the okay the northern part of the planet earth arctic region the northern part of the planet earth that is arctic circle arctic circle that is 63 and of north beyond that entirely it is the arctic region entirely it is the arctic region and arctic region okay the countries like russia okay usa canada greenland okay that is under the control of denmark iceland norway sweden finland they are all part of the arctic region they are all part of the arctic region arctic region is present in the okay this particular northern hemisphere of the planet earth 
so see here why this arctic region is in news and what is arctic council we'll try to understand here so see here let us proceed further so see here the arctic region the arctic region or arctic is a geographic region spreading around the north pole just now you have seen the image the arctic circle 66 and of 66 degrees 33 minutes north delimits the arctic in terms of solar radiation that means what simply here this is the arctic circle okay 66 degrees 33 minutes okay north so this is all the entirely the north of it is the arctic region which is delineated based on the solar radiation why because the sunrise fall slantly in this particular arctic region so see here if you just check the temperature of this particular arctic region the monthly average temperature in the arctic region is below 10 degree centigrade even in the summer season even in the summer season so these are all facts the largest city of the arctic region is murmansk in russia with uh, okay three lakhs people living there you also have murmansk port murmansk port is also there which is called as the ice free port although it is present in the arctic region it is a ice free port understand that very clearly why because uh, warm waters from the tropical regions warm ocean water from the tropical region reach there and create this murmansk ice free port so these are all the facts these are all the facts related to arctic now see here let us understand something like arctic council so there is a lot of data here a lot of information here just try to focus you will get good points you will get good points now very simple these countries are there in the arctic region and arctic region is a very sensitive region on the planet earth and ice caps in the arctic region in the recent times they are melting they are melting at a faster rate because of the global warming because of the global warming or increase in global atmospheric temperatures or increase in global atmospheric temperatures so what will happen because of the rise in global atmospheric temperatures the glaciers or the ice caps or the ice caps in this particular arctic region are melting very fast and adding huge amount of fresh water into the ocean ecosystem by this the mean sea level of the entire world is rising very fast and india having a very long coastline of 7516 kilometer is facing threat because of the rise in sea water levels of the oceans so these are all there so the idea of arctic council is this the idea of arctic council is this we need to form a group we need to form a group and take all the measures to protect and conserve the arctic ecosystem so see here arctic council so what is this it is an intergovernmental forum promoting cooperation coordination interaction among the arctic states and arctic indigenous people like inuits inuits are arctic indigenous people and eskimos eskimos these are arctic indigenous people we need to work with them all these countries and also the communities and other arctic inhabitants on arctic issues so what are those arctic issues environment protection in arctic overcoming marine pollution in arctic overcoming the problem of oil spills in arctic then overcoming the problem of plastic pollution in arctic then studying or making research or doing research on impact of global warming or rising temperatures on arctic so all this is done by the arctic council why in a in a co in a coordinated and cooperative manner understand that very clearly okay so what is this arctic council arctic council how it will work it will work on consensus basis it will work on consensus basis and deal with issues like biodiversity melting of sea ice and plastic pollution issue of black carbon in the arctic region so understand this it is a main topic you should understand it in a step by step manner do not hurry please watch this particular content so that you will understand pause the video and read it carefully you will understand okay now see here before arctic council before arctic council there is something like arctic environmental protection strategy 1991 so what is this 
it is a framework for intergovernmental cooperation on environmental protection initiatives among the arctic states that is canada denmark finland iceland norway sweden russia and united states just now we have seen the map okay what are the arctic states so united states is there why because alaska is there russia sweden norway iceland finland denmark canada and also denmark controls the greenland okay denmark controls the greenland politically so greenland is also there so all these countries initially they formed arctic environmental protection strategy of 1921 it is a just a framework document about what they should do to protect the environment in the arctic that is how it began but what they thought is then they turned this okay they upgraded this arctic environmental protection strategy into arctic council into arctic council which is a high level intergovernmental body set up in 1996 by ottawa declaration ottawa is a city in canada where all these arctic countries prime ministers and presidents met there and they sat and formed the arctic council as a intergovernmental forum through ottawa declaration so ottawa declaration remember this what is the goal of ottawa declaration promote cooperation coordination interaction among the arctic states together with the indigenous communities and other arctic inhabitants same thing all the governments of arctic states should work with the local communities to protect this particular arctic ecosystem okay that is the goal of this particular what you call the arctic council by ottawa declaration so this is who are members so already we have seen canada kingdom of denmark and also the greenland finland iceland norway russia sweden us are members of the arctic council remember these countries perfectly why because many exams many questions denmark represents greenmark greenland and faroe islands also denmark is a separate country but uh, it controls the greenland okay politically okay so see here now as of 2021 okay as of 2021 there are 13 non arctic states okay which were given observer status understand that very clearly apart from these arctic states okay we also have non observer states so who are this non observer states or observer states of the arctic council these are the countries at global level who abide by the ottawa declaration rules and regulations and be part of the arctic council as the observer states they are not the members of the arctic council they are just observer states who has accepted the rules and regulations of the ottawa declaration so see here as of 2021 we have 13 observer states understand this you can expect the questions from this area so germany netherlands poland uk france spain now see here in 2013 in 2013 china india italy japan south korea singapore was given the observer status observer status to the this particular arctic council okay these are non arctic states remember 2013 india is become part of the arctic council as an observer state then immediately 2014 prelims there is a question on this particular arctic council in future also you can expect the question questions like along with india which are these countries that became observer states of the arctic council in 2013 that question you can expect or which is the latest country to become the observer state to the arctic council switzerland from 2017 so you will come to know so just understand this very clearly but understand the facts the chairman of the arctic chairmanship of arctic council rotates every 2 years among the arctic states so what are those arctic states so just i am writing here usa is there canada is there right then denmark denmark is there then finland is there finland then sweden is there sweden is there then you have the norway you have norway then you have the iceland you have the iceland okay greenmark is not a separate country 
Denmark controls the Greenland politically. Understand that very clearly. So these are seven Arctic Council states and there are 13 observer states to the Arctic Council and the chairmanship of the Arctic Council rotates two years for every two years among the Arctic states. The first country to chair the Arctic Council is Canada. Understand that very clearly. Why? Because there itself the meeting happened. At present, Iceland is the chairman of the Arctic Council 2019 to 2021. Now see here, what about India? What about India? So see here, India is having its interest in the Arctic because of the various reasons. So what are these various reasons and why is India uh, is interested in this particular Arctic region? I will explain. So just try to understand this fact. India launched its first scientific expedition to the Arctic Ocean in 2007. In 2007, first time scientific expedition to the Arctic Ocean was conducted by the India. Especially two organizations are there. One is National Center for Polar and Oceanic Research, which is there in Goa. National Center for Polar and Oceanic Research, Goa. Second is National Institute of Ocean Technology, which is there in Chennai, which is there in Chennai. Both of these organizations together, they conducted the scientific expedition first time on behalf of government of India in 2007. Now what they did in that expedition, they have opened a research base called as Himadri, Himadri. Where they have opened it? They have opened it in Svalbard, Norway in Svalbard, Norway in July 2008. 2007, first scientific expedition conducted by National Center for Polar Oceanic Research, Goa and National Institute of Ocean Technology, Chennai. In 2008, the Indian government established the research station Himadri in Svalbard, Norway. So in the Svalbard, Norway, there is also International Arctic Research Base. International Arctic Research Base where scientists from all over the world come there and study the Arctic ecosystem. Understand that very clearly. Okay. Why India established the Himadri Research Station in Arctic? To carry out the studies in disciplines like Glaciology, Atmospheric Sciences and Biological Sciences. The Himadri Research Station will host the Indian scientists. They will do the studies on glacials of Arctic. They will conduct the studies on atmospheric dynamics of Arctic. They will conduct the studies on biology and biodiversity of Arctic. So understand that very clearly. You may get a doubt why Indian scientists are doing research there and what India will, how India will benefit from this particular research okay from uh, conducted in the himadri research station so understand here very clearly what are indian interest in the arctic region what are indian interest in the arctic region so what is this first is that first is that what are indian re, uh, interest in the arctic region so just i will expand this first is environmental interest environmental okay interest so what is this environmental interest or environmental aspects? Very simple. It is all about studying the environment of this particular Arctic ecosystem. Arctic ecosystem. Okay. Second is we have this particular what you call it as the studying of Himalayan glaciers. Whatever the study we do in Arctic, it will be helpful in studying the Himalayan glaciers. So understand this very clearly. Third Indian interest is to become a member of Arctic Council. To become a member of Arctic Council. To become a member of Arctic Council. So see this very clearly. First India has environmental interest. That means it wants to study about the biodiversity of the Arctic. And it wants to know exactly about the how the melting of ice caps and rise in atmospheric temperatures impacting the Arctic biodiversity. Understand that very clearly. Second thing is that the studies that were conducted by Indian scientists in the Arctic regarding the melting of glaciers by global warming, the same inputs whatever we get from that studies, we can apply in the Himalayas where we have the 
ओके ह्यूज नंबर ऑफ ग्लेशियर्स फीडिंग द लाइफलाइन रिवर्स लाइक इंडस ब्रह्मपुत्र एंड गंगा वॉट एवर द इनपुट्स वी गेट इन स्टडिंग दि आर्टिक ग्लेशियर्स दोज वी कैन अप्लाई इन दि दिस पर्टिकुलर हिमालयास फॉर एग्जाम्पल राइजिंग टेम्परेचर्स मेल्टिंग ऑफ द ऐस कैप्स इज हैपनिंग एट अ फास्टर रेट इन आर्टिक सेम थिंग वी कैन अप्लाई हौ मच रईज इन टेम्परेचर्स लीज टू हौ मच ऑफ मेल्टिंग ऑफ ग्लेशियर्स दीज इनपुट्स यू कैन अप्लाई इन दि हिमालयास एंड टेक अप्रोप्रियेट मेजर्स and third is we want to become a member of arctic council so that okay we can get access to the resources that are part of arctic region so arctic region is having more than 30 percentage of undiscovered oil and natural gas resources on the planet earth it has rare earth metals it has the uranium also according to the recent studies so you have crude oil you have petroleum you have natural gas you have rare earth metals you also have the uranium and also you have the huge amount of methane gas or natural gas that is part of the arctic ecosystem which is simply trapped in the arctic glaciers so all this is there our interest our environmental interest okay and to become a member of arctic council so this is the thing here you remember all these facts they are very very helpful for your examination so before going to the before going further we'll try to discuss this particular some of the things see here the arctic council the arctic council what it will do is that it will work with various groups so there are six groups in arctic council six groups in arctic council and all these six groups they work on various related issues for example there is arctic council action plan arctic council action plan is there arctic uh, sorry this is arctic contaminants action plan so what is this arctic contaminants action plan very simple what it will do is that it will just do the research on what type of contaminants are polluting the arctic and how to reduce them it is separate working group under arctic council second is arctic monitoring and assessment program so under this program this group will monitor the arctic ecosystem and arctic environment and how the human population is impacting the arctic ecosystem and what we need to do for it to overcome the problem third is third group of arctic council is conservation of arctic flora and fauna working group caff working group so what is the, it will do it will just study about the flora and fauna that is the biodiversity of arctic what are the threats they are facing and how to overcome these threats so these six working groups six working groups of arctic council you have to write in the mains answers whenever they ask the exam related questions so what are the other things emergency prevention preparedness and response working group eppr group so what is this eppr group simply in arctic if there is any emergency situation like oil spill this particular group will come into the uh, picture and it will tackle that particular issues like that and pame working group you can expect a question here protection of the arctic marine environment pame working group so this is the what it will do it will do the research on arctic marine environment and try to come out with the research inputs on arctic marine environment sustainable development working group so it works for the sustainable development of the arctic region and the indigenous people development so these are all the working groups these are all the working groups that are part of the arctic council you need to write them in the mains examination so apart from that apart from that just try to understand here apart from that recently recently government of india has released draft arctic draft arctic it has released draft arctic policy of india draft arctic policy of india 2021 so what is this draft arctic policy of indian government 2021 very simple through this policy document government of india wants to have a stake in the issues that are happening in and around the arctic and at the same time government of india wants to be part of the research aspects that are going on in the arctic and want to share the knowledge with the international community that is working in the arctic region so the draft arctic policy of indian government 
is based on five pillars is based on five pillars so what are they first thing is science and research so as part of the this particular draft arctic policy first thing is science and research that means indian government will do the science and research in arctic region and also collaborate with research projects of other countries doing research in the arctic region second is that economic and human development economic and human development so second pillar so government of india will work with the arctic council to ensure that there is sustainable development going on in the arctic region very simple then third is transport and connectivity transport and connectivity that means government of india will work out on various transport routes okay to the arctic region so that the oil and natural gas can be easily transported from arctic region fourth is fourth pillar is we have governance and international cooperation that means the government of india will work with the international organizations like un arctic council to see that the arctic ecosystem is protected and conserved and its resources are sustainably utilized very simple then fifth is national capacity building ncb that means government of india will strengthen the already existing research institutions in india working on the arctic for example national center for polar and oceanic research we need to strengthen them why because if you strengthen them then only you will go and do some research in the arctic all these are there just try to understand this in a simple manner so this is all about the arctic council and arctic region very simple i want to conclude like this arctic region is full of resources like crude oil natural gas okay petroleum and you also have this particular uranium and also rare earth metals and this particular arctic region having lot of resources and at the same time it is very very sensitive region on the planet earth any disturbance to the arctic ecosystem will disrupt the world ocean ecosystem and also the indian monsoons okay keeping in view all these things okay we are okay just okay cooperating with the arctic council through this particular draft arctic policy measures and one more thing is that because of the global warming the arctic glaciers are melting at a very fast rate adding huge amount of fresh water to the ocean ecosystem and because of that the sea level is rising and the sea level is rising india having 7516 km long coastline will be facing lot of threats because of the rise in sea level so this is all about the arctic council i hope i have given some idea about the arctic region and arctic council okay wherever you get some articles you read and build on this particular knowledge i don't say that i have given total aspects regarding this definitely you may get some idea what is happening in the arctic region what is this arctic council why it is in news why india is interested in it all this you will get some idea understand that very clearly and the extraction of the resources in the arctic region is done by excessively is it is done by the russia for example you will be totally surprised russia has launched the world's first floating nuclear reactor okay in the arctic region why why because to have the electric power transmission lines to the oil drilling to the oil exploration areas is very difficult so what russian scientists did is they created the world's first floating nuclear power plant and that will be part of the this arctic region or arctic ocean where it will supply the power to the arctic okay ocean this particular oil drills and they will extract the oil and that is how the russia is benefiting from this particular this thing but in the process they are creating lot of uh, ecological destruction oil spills are happening okay so understand this very clearly so all these are there okay i hope i have given some basic knowledge you build on it why because uh, no uh, lecture will be uh, no lecturer will give total knowledge to you that is not possible just i have given some basic maybe a 10 percent knowledge about arctic and arctic council you build on it okay so understand that very clearly but from now onwards whatever you read regarding arctic it will be easy okay now see here already they have asked a question so already i told you 2013 india became the non observer state or observer state to the this particular uh, arctic council 
so in 2014 prelims paper they asked a question so what is the question consider the following countries denmark japan russian federation united kingdom united states of america which of the above are members of arctic council very simple already we know denmark is part of arctic council greenland we know russian federation is part of arctic council okay then we know usa is part of the arctic council because of alaska okay so understand this 1 3 and the 5 1 3 and 5 option d is the right answer japan is not there you can eliminate this this uk is not there you can eliminate this and this so understand this in future also they may ask the questions like this for example one potential question can be like this See here, what the question can be? It can be like this. Along with India, which are the other countries that became okay, observer states to the Arctic Council in 2013? Along with India, remember these states. Okay, This is one potential future question for UPSC. Now, they also asked one more question. That is the mains question in 2018 and also the this is 2000 okay 15 prelims question the term ind arc india arctic sometimes seen in news is the name of it is the name of what is this an indigenously developed radar system inducted into indian defense no india satellite to provide services to the ocean countries of indian ocean no a scientific establishment set up by india in arc Antarctica region? No. Ind Arc, what is this? It is India's underwater observatory to scientifically study the Arctic region. So, this is placed in Norway. In Norway, they have kept this underwater observatory where it will just analyze the dynamics of the ocean, Arctic Ocean. Okay. In a particular month, okay, throw how much is the temperature rise in the that particular ocean where it is present underwater observatory so they just calculate in every month what are the fluctuations in the ocean water temperature and they try to correlate this fluctuations in the ocean water temperatures from the normally occurring ocean water temperatures in that particular region and try to correlate with the indian monsoon that is how this ind arc is working this one question and 2018 mains question arctic has grown to occupy a special place in global strategic game explain 150 words 10 marks so if you are interested okay just write this particular question try to write this particular question from this particular okay whatever i have uh, uh, class discussion and just try to just uh, whatsapp on this particular number of 9704 608095 okay just try to attempt this question and write this question and just send to this particular number okay i will check the answers and give the reply okay so this is how it is you can watch up and attempt this question from the this particular thing and once you attempt after two or three days i will write the answer on the board and show it to you how you should write the mains answer okay in the upsc prelims exam so this is how it is okay now let us understand about the simple topics like uh, eShrim portal for prelims very simple in the name itself it is there eShrim shrum means some activity some effort you are keeping so it is a database for unorganized sector workers in india so what is the aim aim is to register 38 crore unorganized workers who are unorganized workers okay which are out of the formal employment okay structure okay so they are like construction laborers which whom we see migrant workforce who go from one state to another state to work in the hotels to work in the cabs okay to work in the transportation sector street vendors who will sell the vegetables fruits and all those things domestic workers and other unorganized workers all of their data will be registered in eStrem portals according to government of india there are approximately 38 crore unorganized people unorganized workers in india who are working in unorganized sector and their information will be stored in the eStrem database then what will happen once they upload their information 
okay what is their age what is their name aadhar number okay bank account then which place they are present in which city which uh, state what they are doing how much is their monthly or daily wages all that information is taken and these people will be provided with a 12 digit unique number so what is this 12 digit unique number it will help in in including them in various social security schemes like ayushman bharat in the present day the health crisis is okay looming in india okay they should get some help from the government of india and once you register simply the government of india will approach you uh, they will call to your mobile number the officials and they say that you are eligible for ayushman bharat please uh, don't worry government of india will take care of you you can in case of any health emergency you can avail this services and there are various pension related schemes social security related schemes there are various direct benefit related schemes and government of india has lot of scholarship schemes for the students who are part of the sc st bc and other communities and below poverty line okay so for them if they part of the this particular an organized sector family they will also get some benefits so all this is there okay so to register all of these people into the e shram portal government of india has created a toll free number 14437 understand that very clearly you can simply apply it so if you are just uh, a person who is coming to you or house to sell the vegetables you can just give the information to him that there is a portal you just register here and if you want you can register on behalf of him okay so that it will be helpful for them why because in future they will get all the social security related benefits so understand these facts very clearly okay eastrum portal this is by ministry of labor and employment then we have something like pragati platform pragati means proactive governance and timely implementation so what is this it is a multi purpose multi modal it platform ict information and communication technology platform very simple how it it is launched by prime minister that is prime minister office in 2015 understand that very clearly what is the aim the aim is to address the common man grievances and monitor the important programs and projects of government of india as well as the projects of state governments very very important e governance initiative by the government of india started in 2015 it is it will work like this so understand this very clearly how it will work prime minister and the officials in the prime minister office cabinet secretary and the prime minister office officials and what will happen the chief secretaries of all the states and union territories the chief secretaries of all the states and union territories all of them will be connected virtually in this particular pragati platform prime minister will be there prime minister official pmo office officials cabinet secretaries and the chief secretaries of all the states and union territories in india will be on a virtual platform and how they will work simply they will take up some important projects for example if you take the andhra pradesh uh, polavaram project for example the prime minister will ask the andhra pradesh chief secretary what is the status of the polavaram project how much uh, work is completed how much work is pending then chief secretary of andhra pradesh will say that these are the issues uh, that are blocking the project there are financial constraints we do not get the environmental clearances like that some grievances he will raise okay then immediately prime minister will ask the uh, prime minister office officials please grant the appropriate money please resolve the issue within 4 5 days and report back please give the environmental clearances for that particular project immediately on the spot the issues will be understood at the central level state government level and they will be solved within few days keeping certain timelines the prime minister will ask the pm official how much more time you need to grant the money for this project they will say that we need one week okay one week you grant the money then report to the uh, report to me like that the this is how the pragati platform will work so what will happen here it will improve the speed of execution of projects first thing it will increase the 
transparency in how the project is moving and it will increase the accountability okay accountability is increased how here the issues were directly raised for example one official will complain that environment ministry is not giving the permission for forest clearance like that and here there is accountability will be there on the environment of, uh, for uh, environment ministry officials then immediately they will uh, uh, say their own view that uh, the state government need to uh, submit these particular papers or uh, we require some more time like that accountability will be ensured efficiency will be improved there will be transparency if there are any corruption issues they will be raised okay it will improve the efficiency of the projects and speed of work of the projects all these are benefits of this particular pragati platform not only that common man they can also submit their grievances to the pragati platform a common man if he is exploited by the private hospitals okay during the covid pandemic they complained to this particular pragati platform so and so district so and so hospital okay exorbitantly charged us we suffered financially so please look into the issue so these complaints went there and complaints related to human rights violation okay complaints related to the okay the political uh, what you call uh, political leaders uh, okay dominating or violating the human rights of the people with the use and abuse of power so all these issues can be raised by the pragati flat platform even you also if you have any issue in your locality you can raise this through the pragati platform no problem why because we are part of the this particular country and government is there to serve the people of this particular country as a responsible citizen we should know all these things we should utilize the services okay in a fair manner with your knowledge and experience so this is how the pragati platform will work understand this very clearly so all the other things you can see here okay so see here pragati steps towards making governance more efficient transparent and responsive okay so this is how it will be worked so they take up various issues like prime minister will sit on the on the particular day he will uh, sit or conduct the meeting of pragati for uh, understanding the status of smart cities progress in india then all the prime minister officials and all the chief secretaries will sit virtually and he will track the progress how much money is released how much it is spent what type of works you did please show me in the uh, images or in the form of videos what are the ground level issues in 4 or 5 years how much progress was done before 4 years how is the smart city before after 4 years how is the smart city this is how everything is done virtually see here images will be there videos will be there okay live okay videos will be there if we want if prime minister wants he asked the official to go and show the things at the grassroots level live in the meeting so such a advanced pragati platform is launched in the 2015 so understand this so how good it will be just think okay so the system is designed by prime minister office national informatics center also is part of this particular thing very much simple so it is a monthly program every month prime minister will conduct the meeting by fixing the agenda of the meeting so understand that very clearly it is a three tier system comprises of the prime minister and the prime minister officials pmo union government secretaries chief secretaries of all states in india already i told you so that point it is so nothing much is there here just how it works you should understand so already there is one question asked in upsc cds exam pragati is the acronym for proactive governance and transparency in india proactive governance and timely implementation this is the uh, right answer 2017 cds exam question so this is how it is so understand these things very clearly so ntca so what why ntca is in news why because uh, it asked the state government of uttarakhand to stop the construction of the bridges and other walls inside the jim corbett tiger reserve so what is this ntca is all about just try to understand this so what is this ntca so just i will give you an overview ntca is a statutory body ntca is a statutory body created in 
by amending wildlife protection act 1972 it is headed by environment minister ministry of environment forest and climate change he will head the ntca what are the uh, objectives or aims of ntca very simple they have to go with the effective management of tiger reserves in india second thing is that they have to conduct the tiger census tiger census in india third is that they will give the permission to the diversion of forest inside the tiger reserves for the case of mining in case of any mining so all these are the objectives or aims of the ntca so it is under ministry of environment forest and climate change so all these points i have said so it works for the protection and conservation of tiger reserves management of tiger reserves and tiger census conduct conducting in india is done by the ntca on behalf of ntca for every four years you know the indian government conduct the tiger census this exercise is monitored by ntca and is planned by ntca so this is how it is so just try to understand this so what is the issue the issue is ntca asked the uttarakhand state government to stop the works that are going on inside the jim carbet tiger reserve we should know about jim carbet tiger reserves also and it is present in Uttarakhand. If you take the Uttarakhand map, it will be like this. So here you have the Rajaji Tiger Reserve. Here you have the Jim Corbett Tiger Reserve. Understand that? So Jim Corbett Tiger Reserve located at the foothills of Himalayas in Uttarakhand. Okay. Then rivers like Ram Ganga, Palayan, Sona Nandi flows through this particular Jim Corbett Tiger Reserve. Understand that very clearly. It is spread over the Bhabbar and Lower Shivalik region. The Lower Shivalik Himalayan region and Bhabbar region, that is the Boulder region of Himalayas, it is part, the Jim Corbett Tiger Reserve is present there. Okay, Project Tiger was launched in 1973, okay, in the Jim Corbett Tiger Reserve, okay, understand that very clearly. So, when Project Tiger was launched in 1973, nine tiger reserves were created in India. One of them is Jim Corbett Tiger Reserve. Then, the Jim Corbett Tiger Reserve has highest tiger density in the country. Understand that very clearly. According to the recent tiger census, according to the recent tiger census, so we have around, we have around 442 tigers in the Jim Corbett Tiger Reserve. So, tiger census will be conducted once in four years by NTCA and the uh, government of India. So, this particular tiger census is conducted for the first time in the year 2006, then in the year 2010, then in the year 2014 and then in the year 2018. Okay, understand that very clearly. So, according to the recent census, okay, the tiger population in Uttarakhand is 442. The next census will be done in 2022 but this year government is planning to conduct one year before in 2021 itself understand these facts very clearly so in my environment classes in the app of ashoka academy you can access this environment class english medium okay so see here ntca <coughs> will uh, deal with various steps ntca will deal with the various aspects uh, like uh, how to protect the tigers in india how to use the technology uh, for protection of tigers, how to deal with the man-eater tigers and how to uh, maintain the tiger reserves in India, what uh, technologies and management practices we should apply in the this particular tiger reserves. All this is done by NTCA. Understand that very clearly. Okay. So, this is about the NTCA. You can pause this uh, screen and uh, read this particular thing. Okay. So, see here already they have asked some questions. They have asked some questions. Uh, from this particular area so very simple question consider the following pairs consider the following pairs this is 2013 question regarding the tigers dampa tiger reserve mizoram gumti wildlife sanctuary sikkim saramati peak nagaland which of the above pairs are correctly matched okay very simple dampa tiger reserve is one of the 52 tiger reserves in india located in Mizoram, this is right. There is no doubt about that. It's a factual thing. Saramati Peak, it is there in Nagaland itself. At the border of Nagaland and Myanmar, you can see this Saramati Peak. 
Gumti Wildlife Sanctuary, it is not in Sikkim, it is in Tripura. It is in Tripura. Understand this very clearly. In Sikkim, we have the Kanchan Dijonga National Park and Wildlife Sanctuary. Understand this. So, 1 and 3 are right answers, other are wrong. This is asked, asked in 2013. Now, there is one question on NTCA. So, see here, 96, uh, sorry, this is a question in 2015. So, what is this question? So, see here, NTCA, National Tiger Conservation Authority, is a statutory body. Yes, it is a statutory body created by amending the Wildlife Protection Act 1976. So, see here. Then, what is this statement? National Ganga River Basin Authority is chaired by Prime Minister. Yes, this is chaired by Prime Minister. Okay. But NTCA is chaired by Environment Minister, not by Prime Minister. Now, first statement, let us look. Animal Welfare Board of India established under Environment Protection Act 1986. No, this is wrong. See here, Animal Welfare Board of India is uh, established under the Prevention of Cruelty Towards Animals Act 1960. Very few people know this fact. So, that is wrong. So, when one is wrong, this will go, this will go. 2 and 3, he is only saying 2 is compulsory, right? Okay, so 3 is the fact. 2 and 3 is the answer. Very simple. Okay, so one more question recently asked in 2020 regarding the tigers is this one. Among the following tiger reserves, this is 2020 prelims. Okay, uh, October 2020 prelims. Among the following tiger reserves, which one has the largest area under critical tiger habitat? Very simple, tiger reserve is divided into two zones. One is the central zone, core zone. Other is the buffer zone. This core zone is also called as critical tiger habitat. So, which tiger reserve has got the largest area under critical tiger habitat? It is Nagarjuna Sagar Sri Shalom. It is India's largest tiger reserve, five sorry, 4,500 square kilometer area. Very big, very big. Okay. So, this is the today's current affairs. Okay. We will discuss the other aspects like one topic is left like uh, uh, fair and remunerative price for sugarcane. I will discuss this. Why? Because the questions were asked related to sugarcane uh, previously. So, tomorrow I will discuss this. Uh, so, for today we have discussed only the four topics. So, what are these four topics that we have discussed today? So, just try to understand this. So, I have discussed about the I have discussed about this particular Women Equality Day for prelims, Arctic region for mains, Eastram portal prelims, Pragati platform prelims, NTCA, Jim Corbett, Tiger Reserve for prelims. So, tomorrow we will continue the other things. Thank you for your support and cooperation. Okay, please attempt that question and just send in the WhatsApp. I will correct and just give the reply. Okay, so thank you very much. Have a nice day. Okay, thank you very much.